Welcome to Residential Tech Talks. I'm Jeremy Glowacki, Executive Editor of Residential Tech Today. On this week's podcast, home performance experts Corbett and Grace Lunsford join us from Atlanta, where they are the stars of the public television series Home Diagnosis and founders of the Building Performance Workshop. Home Diagnosis is the first ever TV series on the physics, chemistry, and microbiology of homes. The six episodes of season one were shot in cities across the U.S. as part of the Proof is Possible tour, and the show follows Corbett and Grace in the tiny lab as they use diagnostic testing to solve mystery problems of all types in homes new and old. Season two is out now, which tells the whole story of the science of homes over 13 episodes as Grace and Corbett build their own perfectly tuned 3,000 square foot home in Atlanta. Grace and Corbett Lunsford, mm-hmm. welcome to the podcast. Thank you very hey, much for having thank us. Thank you. Well, I, as I mentioned uh, in our conversation before we started recording, I have watched a lot of episodes. I haven't caught up on the entire series yet, but there's so much there to, to dive into. I want to touch on that a bit, but the reason I kind of came to know about you is that uh, Corbett, you were just at the International Builder Show in Orlando, uh, where you covered some topics, uh, specifically real life case studies um, regarding radon, humidity control, ventilation, and air, con- air cleaning. Um, before we get into the deep dive of what you guys are doing there, um, maybe just how did that presentation go? How were you received by the builders there at that conference? What, what all did you cover with them? Uh, it was great. I've been presenting at the Builder Show at booths for the uh, like I don't know for four uh, Builder okay. shows or so. Obviously not last year right. because of pandemic, but um, I, they it's still kind of a niche conversation. <laughs> so I will say that there are a fair more and more builders are becoming extremists in this field because we the, a few people understand that we are building homes more airtight than ever before because of codes. They are more insulated than ever before because of codes. The HVAC systems are changing and evolving, and people might be doing things like putting ductless systems in, which we also have. But um, I think that the downfall of a lot of contractors and of our customers is that we live in a country where we're kind of focused entirely on products. And I think that in within the space of like um, entertainment contractors and you know people installing like a subwoofer or uh, an entertainment system, even, even though it's called a system, it's really part of a bigger system of air leakage pathways. You're going up there in the attic and you're drilling holes and stuff to run cables. There's that's like doing things, the physics, chemistry, and microbiology of a home. And so getting people to like explode out of their myopic view of looking at just products and like, Oh, this is really cool. This doorknob can unlock on mm-hmm. my phone. Like that's awesome. But it's part of a bigger system. And you should think about Russian hackers, for example, as part of that system. But like, you know, it's it's just kind of a an expansion of that idea. And I think that some people are really good, natural at thinking in terms sure. of like the bigger, the forest for the trees. But we all need to learn that because it's it's important. Yeah. And I think our, our Western education system really, I mean, it almost even trains us to think about the individual thing. Like we we think about a foot and a yard versus like, a meter and a kilometer. And like, even the fact that meter is in the, the math thing, you understand that it's a greater system versus like a thing and another thing and another thing. And so, so yeah, so we're, we're working on it and we're trying to communicate the systems approach thought uh, to contractors and homeowners alike with home diagnosis. And we really bring that conversation in on both sides, because the, frankly, the journey of building a house uh, if anybody has ever built a house, <laughs> knows that it is one where a lot of empathy comes in for both sides, the homeowners and the contractors. Well, how you got into this was, well, I want to back up and talk about your how, how you did start a show and, and got into this because you're not from a builder background at all or, or any of this uh, current sort of no. skill set that you've mm-hmm. developed. Um, you both come from... Uh, more artist backgrounds, correct? So music and, and acting. Um, so that career, I guess you felt kind of ran its course a bit or you, you were limited. In- I mean, stop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, when, so Grace was a non-union actress. 
And I was a musician who worked for dancers. And of all artists, dancers are the poorest okay. statistically. And so I was begging for money from people who are begging <laughs> for money. And it was just like, I was about to be 30 and we were like living in Chicago and we wanted yeah. to have kids someday. And, and I became a union actress and started booking some big stuff. And so it was a wonderful place where, you know, you can, as a partner, support the other with your added income. And so he stepped away and we were wondering what the universe would say to us. And our a family member suggested, you know, I've got this new house. We have a baby on the way. And I know there's problems with it, but I don't know what to do or where to start. And I just want to go to the doctor and have the doctor tell mm -hmm. me what to do. And we were like, oh, what is that? Who is this like house doctor concept? And so there are, there are just like within, you know, um, specific entertainment contractor, you know, you could, you get your audio people, you got your visual people, maybe you do both. Um, there's like insulators, HVAC guys, tilers, you know, and they each only really only know how to assess and sell you their specific thing. And I think that there's a huge opportunity for we've been pressing on HVAC contractors for a long time to get more involved in the enclosure, the mm. skin of the house. But this is something that, frankly, is a huge opportunity for people who understand technology, which a lot of your listeners mm -hmm. will, mm -hmm. because HVAC guys, no offense to them, they're great people, but they are not super high tech and, and they're not systems thinkers often either. I will so, say, I do feel like that is changing because some of the technology around HVAC is changing. And true. so they just n are having to meet the demand now. And there's some really savvy guys coming in. But, That's true. And, but, but mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the thermostat integration and the Internet of Things stuff that, mm -hmm. that you guys are doing is coming down and integrating with their stuff. And there's still two people involved in it. Really, we need either one person or we need those people to constantly be in conversation with each other. And also then with the insulators and the plumbers and the electricians, mm -hmm. et cetera, because it's like, there's just too many people doing too many things that have impacts on each other and they're not talking to each other. Right. Yeah. It. And so a, a lot of what I, I see you doing is talking about the, the performance of the home and it, it goes from, uh, the, the healthy aspects of air quality to the comfort of the home, you know, hot or cold moisture levels and that sort of thing, humidity levels. And, uh, and, and so you, you get into, like you said, the insulation and the skin of, of the home working in tandem with the, the mechanical part of the HVAC system. So, so, so when you get into the whole, um, the holistic up approach, what you're looking for is better performance from the home. So, um, what, where you've gone on your show, I've seen, um, you, you, you go in, there's a, there's a problem there. I, I, I'm having in those early episodes, you're having like a person that has a, an odor from the basement kind of creeping into the HVAC system somehow, very sensitive person. I, I related to that. I'm not a woman, but I do have a sensitive, um, I have that high sensitivity, like would describe. Factories, yes, so. exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, also just a renovation that should have been great, but then the furnace is missized, which goes back to, wow, the, you thought you're hiring someone to do this job that knew what they were doing and they thought more power is better, but not necessarily. So you go in and, and on the show and assess these things. And what, what are some of those tools that you use? Um, I, I noticed the door um, comes up a lot, the, the fan um, device that you use. So can you, for those who aren't familiar with the show, kind of walk through some of that process that you do to help diagnose performance issues in a home? Sure. So before we nerd out, I want to say that the main tool that we use on the show and with our own clients is storytelling. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you're talking about these tools that we're about to talk about, you got to realize they're characters in okay. a story. Right. And so you got to talk that way. So you can't just, cause nobody cares about, well, your bed, your bedroom is five passes. Like, <laughs> yeah. By the way, whenever, whenever you get into that sort of conversation, I get a little, a little sweaty cause I'm like, oh, right. I don't yeah. know how to do that. Well, and also Right. And, and as you were talking about, like, you know, comfort and um, health issues, what we're really talking about is physics and we're talking about chemistry. And even that, like some people start glazing over and getting scared. Other people totally nerd out and are like, oh, my gosh, tell me more about physics and chemistry. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really how you sell it. So everybody, just real quickly, let's repeat. Blower oh, yes. door. Blower door. Yeah. Lower door. That's that's the number one tool. So here's the thing. There's tools you could go buy a 
$300 even infrared camera and start using it today. I think that is a terrible okay. idea because number one, you're dealing with only one part of heat flow within a home, which is radiant heat flow. Um, there's all kinds of other dynamics going on and the dynamics of how the home is, is working because everything changes. Physics, chemistry, and microbiology is changing literally minute to minute in the room that we're in, in the room around your face, wherever you're listening to this. And so what you want to understand is that this stuff is changing all the time. You don't want to pick up a tool that you do not understand and start saying like, oh, here's the surgery we should do on this house because of that's the same as malpractice, medical malpractice, right? So blower door is a uh, fairly uh, extensive and expensive tool. It's about a $3,500 investment, but you can learn it. We teach a class in one day. That's a certification class for using blower door uh, technology and duct testing, which is the same, it's a tiny blower door, basically the same thing. So that's the most important thing you could do for your clients right now. If you were going to start moving into like, Oh, I want to do something in yeah. this space, blower door mm -hmm. testing, bam. Um, that's going to tell you number one, how much leakage there is in each home that you visit. And also it can help you identify exactly where the air leakage is because you cannot do that with just an infrared camera. You could pretend to, and there are plenty of people out there who have been doing that for years and, uh, and their clients will call me later because they did not actually fix the problem. And they'll, so, so anyway, there's just, just know you're getting into a, uh, a different world there. There is, uh, so infrared cameras, there's smoke. If you were just simply get like a little, a there's this $50 oh, fogger. The smoke wizard thing. Yeah. The wizard stick. It's called a wind indicator, but you could use that. You could use your hand. You just feel, you know, you close a bedroom door while the blower door is running. You can feel if there's a lot of wind coming mm -hmm. through that crack, it means there's a big air leak in there. Manometers, which are digital pressure gauges, mm -hmm. that comes with your blower door kit. On the HVAC side, you've got uh, airflow testing devices like anemometers and hot wire anemometers and pitot tubes. And, you know, there's all kinds of different things that you could do. But the, there's like, if you get into pressure testing, essentially what we do is boil down to four elements of home performance, which is heat bleed, airflow and pressure, moisture, and contaminants. Mm -hmm. And the contaminants are mostly in the air, but we can also talk about them in water. There's things like you know, total di uh, dissolved yeah. solids meters. Um, and so all these things can be measured. You can test anything. And, and just because it's invisible doesn't mean that you can't find out a ton about it. And that actually goes for builders. Like if you have a home where you've got a problem and you think that might have been built wrong, you can absolutely find out exactly what happened within the sequence of construction that ended up where we are. We could find out whether the house wrap got taped. You could find out whether the drywall was installed properly. We can saw, find out if the insulation is well installed or not. Like you can see behind all the layers that are trying to cover up all the mistakes that we've been making for, you know, about a century now and more and more recently because we're moving so fast and we're like, it's, we're in this boom period. Um, we're just throwing right. houses up and, <laughs> literally throwing them up, like barfing <laughs> them out. And so we, we need to stop doing that because yeah. peep, actual people and actual children are going to live in here. And we're going to spend- For generations, potentially. Exactly. We spend 90% of our time indoors, 50 years of our lives on average, we are going to spend in our own right. homes. So right. that's got to, you're breathing a ton of air every day. It's the most right. that you're bringing anything out of your, in and out of your body of anything in the world, your air inside your home. And so if we are worried about- ADHD and, you know, uh, allergies and, and all the yeah. stuff that's going that, on that with cost society that just today. won't seem yeah. to go away. We, we got to look at our homes first because it right. would make, it would, it would be insane. Not yeah. I mean, my, yeah, my sister was telling me yesterday that she's, she knows three different people who have had lung cancer who've never smoked before. And she just heard about radon and like the connection between cancer there. And like, it got her thinking about it. And that's, I mean, it's like, we're still learning about radon, but it's something you should be thinking about. It is the indoor chemistry that we should be thinking about um, because you're right. You didn't pick up a cigarette and now you've got something happening in your body. So what happened? Um, because something did happen. Right. You just didn't have that. Right. Luck. Well, I want to, I want to continue that topic. Um, but first we need to take a short break. For 25 years, Leon has been dedicated to creating innovative products that mix art with audio and design with technology. Knowing that technology is an integral part of modern interior design, Leon's collection of customizable speakers and technology concealment solutions is designed to deliver both sound and style to any space. 
From signature soundbars that seamlessly blend in with the display to art and frames that turn your TV into a work of art, Leon's products are built to order and handcrafted just for you to ensure a perfect match every time. Visit www.leonspeakers.com to learn more. Welcome back. We're talking with Corbett and Grace Lunsford, stars of the public television series Home Diagnosis and founders of the per Building Performance Workshop. So when you talk about contaminants in the home, um, obviously a simple element is the filter and the furnace and maintaining that. Um, are there other, I guess, not to get into the products again, and we were talking holistically and all of that, but uh, are there technologies that enable better filtration or air purification within the home uh, or, or is it just really home by home assessment? Here's what's happening. It's not sealed off, whatever. I mean, honestly, what you just said, you kind of answered your own question mm -hmm. um, in your question. Are, is there like proven filtration? The word is filter. And yes, like you want to be filtering the air in your home. And this is where it your brain starts having to explode because it's really important to do that. Um, if a normal person or an untrained professional goes in and starts replacing filters and they take a filter that's a one inch thick fiberglass filter you can see through. And they're like, you know what? I went to the store and I got you a Merv 13 filter because I heard that that can filter out 85% of uh, big particulates and 25% of small particulates. And this is going to make you a lot healthier. It will burn your HVAC system up immediately because it's too high of a, of a pressure drop is what we call it. So it just doesn't allow as much air through if it's one okay. inch thick. So you need to actually be surgically changing these things. We need right. to put, take that one inch filter slot and make it a four inch filter cabinet with a door that's weather stripped or blah, blah, blah. Right. So back to the storytelling concept and why we call the show home diagnosis is Corbett is a super healthy guy, but if I take out his heart and I go and get like, you know, one of those Olympic athletes right now, take their heart and put it in Corbett, he's not suddenly going to become an Olympic athlete. And it's the same kind of concept of that, that changing out something isn't going to suddenly make it better because it's a system. Mm -hmm. and so it has to work with the system components. And, and probably all you do need to do is some testing, some understanding the biometrics and tweaking it and then making it mm -hmm. work. Right. And as far as filtration goes, it is the only way to clean the air that is safe. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm going to say that again, nothing aside from a filter should be installed by anybody who's listening to my voice right now. And that includes on your own home. And that includes UV lights. It includes things that spray hydroxyl or hydrogen peroxide or bleach. Bring ozone into your home. Too. People are trying to sell installers crazy things, things they do not understand. And, and you are welcome to, to show this to those people who are trying to sell you this and say, hey, these guys are saying this. You want to go ahead and yell at them? Like, I'll take all the hate mail all day long from these companies that are selling these things. Yeah. Because the fact is they do not understand it. And the fact is that it's a every home is a chemical reactor. And if you start doing electrical things to destroy or rip apart molecules inside of that home, that's called chemistry. Mm -hmm. And you want less chemistry in general. Chemistry is chemical reactions. And that's just not a good idea. So, you, so, so anyway, filtration is the only way. If you want to understand how to air, clean a home uh, air-wise, mm -hmm. filtration is the one thing that you need to focus on. You can ignore yeah. literally everything else that they're trying to sell you. And, and again, and just I want to reiterate, it's the only way that we fully understand. Yeah. You know, right now there's a lot of things. We've gone through this global pandemic. We're learning a lot about things and learning a lot about how much we don't understand. And that is that's the mm -hmm. problem is you just don't want to be willing nilly with things that you don't understand. So a lot of what I see from your show, uh, when, when you, when you are diagnosing issues, it may be an issue where, uh, the outdoor isn't kept out, the, out, the outdoor elements aren't kept outdoors, et cetera. So an attic or a basement, um, or a crawl space, the crawl space is supposed to be an outdoor element, right? But sometimes there's access that is not sealed off into the home. So you're, you're not completely keeping things away mm -hmm. from contamination and things like that. Uh, so what, so what you're, what you're talking about, by the way, just for mm -hmm. verbiage. So people understand is the envelope right. of a home. 
So the envelope of the home might not include the attic, not might not include the crawl space, but it could right. if you change the envelope. And it might and look like it. it doesn't include it. Like there might be insulation in the ceiling of the crawl space, but that doesn't mean anything because air leakage goes around uh, insulation and it'll always defeat the insulation. Yeah. So yeah, the way that it looks and the and the way that you approach homes you've got to understand where the envelope actually is. Yeah. But so now that they, you, we've clarified that word, what's your so, question? So about I guess um, one, one of the concerns <laughs> from a, from an AV integration standpoint would be uh, a lot of holes are getting cut into ceilings. So uh, not only light fixtures, which is a new, new technology for these folks to be able to install because of led um, low voltage lighting, but also more more commonly in ceiling speakers and that sort of thing. So if it's interior, it's not a big deal, perhaps from a lower floor to the second level. But when you're talking about an upstairs where it goes into the attic, there there is concern there that you're disturbing insulation and things, and and maybe even creating air leakage um, if if mm -hmm. that's not done correctly. So are there best practices there in terms of how to go about that work without having uh, it, uh, problems that you didn't intend to happen. Yes. Uh, uh, try to foresee the side effects that you're going to be creating. That's the number one thing. I, there's a, you know, if you have a $300 infrared camera, what I was mentioning earlier, which is very available. Like I have plenty of homeowner clients who buy their own $500 infrared camera just so they can check on their contractor's work. You want to get out in front of that. So go ahead and hand your client your $500 infrared camera that's almost impossible to break. They can wear it around their neck and say, here, Mrs. Jones, we're going to be working up in the attic. And I just want to make sure that my guys don't mess up any of your insulation. If you would just, you know, every now and then take a look at the ceiling and make sure that you're not seeing any cold spots show up. Because I want to know so that we can, you know, we're going to check ourselves. But I also just, I would love it if you checked us as well. Like, can you imagine? That is, that, that would, they would never call anyone else for the rest of their lives, because you have now earned their trust because you taught them something, you gave them a tool and you're asking them to, to take, look at your work. Yeah, to take, take ownership interest. of the work that you're doing in their home that they own. Right. Like, so you should also yeah. be doing your own checks. You can use infrared cameras. You can use zonal pressure testing is a part of blower door testing. We show this on our, our television series. We're teaching normal people how to do this diagnostic. So you, we don't want normal people to be much better trained than professionals. That is what is going to happen in many places in the country because contractors are just very slow to, um, to develop this. So if you are interested in, in moving into this, yes, get some tools, get some know-how, make sure not to disturb the insulation. Like I went to Ace Hardware, not, not to name drop, but like, you know, <laughs> it's not a specialty shop. I can't find hardly anything that I could use to actually build a house there. Um, which always annoys me because it's the closest one <laughs> to our house, but I found a junction box that is air sealed. It's got airtight gaskets on it that have little X's cut into it that you can just send your little, like, and it's at yeah. the, the hardware store, the local hardware store. There's not, it's not that hard. You just have to care yeah. a little bit and know what to care about. And then you can actually find like, there's tons of products out there. If you want to be that, you know, product centered person that can help you to, to at least start on the path toward performance. Yeah. Even if you're not thinking in terms of a system, if you just used like airtight, uh, junction boxes. That's it. That's, that would be huge. And that's, and that's such a simple yeah. thing. And, and the other thing too, look into the word air sealing in building products, because there are tapes that are, are meant to seal the outside of a home, but absolutely. Could you put it in? You're meant to use it up on the roof and like screw through it. So you create an airtight seal around a, a sunlight or something like that. Could you use that to make sure that you create an airtight seal in the like cool workshop garage that you're outfitting with an awesome sound system, mm -hmm. but also has paints and solvents and things in there that you don't want your kid's playroom to be mm -hmm. breathing. Absolutely. That's that, that stuff exists and we should be using it. Absolutely. Yeah. Ventilation is also a, a so aside from filtration, the other way to clean the air is to dilute it with mm -hmm. outdoor air. And that's something that mm -hmm. if you're in there, if you're pulling an electrical permit, and I don't know if you pull electrical permits for any AV stuff, but you know, <laughs> if you're already bringing your truck out there, putting in a ventilation system, if you're, you know, putting in some kind of a, like, you know, Grace's example, turning a garage into a workshop where the dad's going to be doing sawdusty stuff and painting things, making sure that you don't then connect that space to the rest of the house, or if it's already connected, which is very likely mm -hmm. that you're depressurizing that space so that air always flows from the, the house into the garage as opposed to vice versa. It's just basically, 
you know, playing with flows, mm -hmm. you have, you got to understand how things flow mm -hmm. naturally and then how you can start to play with that. And it's very simple. It's fans and barriers and insulation and heat exchangers. And like, and like we intuitively know this, you know, like the, the mom projects that I see these, like other moms are totally upcycling things from their kids playroom and they've got the ventilator on and they've got the fan moving because they're working with this paint. I'm like, we know to do that. We know to filter, mm -hmm. we know to ventilate. We just need to take it up to that next step again, to the whole systems approach and incorporate it in the full right. house. So a lot of your, well, your first season of your show, you focused on your tiny lab, um, mobile lab that you lived in. Um, that was your five years. We're That's in right where we're in. That, oh, <laughs> we're I, in our I, tiny lab right now. I thought that might be it. So <laughs> how is the transition then? Uh, Cause season two goes through building your dream home there in, in Georgia and all of the ideal performance aspects that you try to accomplish with clients, but now you're doing for your own home. Um, the, the process of moving from a small, tiny space, 200 square feet to a home that's normal size, quote unquote. <laughs> um, are you, are you yes. finding that you achieved your goals? Uh, are you seeing challenges living in that space now because it is bigger and it is hard to think of everything? How, how's that? Uh, how have those goals been met on the new space that you live in? Well, I think that the the uh, the word that was buried in your question that um, is the most important word is ideal. Uh, there is we make a point in the final episode, which I'm about to deliver to our, <laughs> uh, our distributor in the next couple of days here, that there are no prescriptions for home performance for all homes. There is no single product that can work for every family in every home. And so if you miss something, there is always a way to shift. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, to go back to the Tai Chi example, if you're like, you know, doing some Tai Chi stuff and you miss something, there's always a way to recover your balance and get back on your feet. And so, uh, for example, I just learned that residential vapor barriers that we put on, under the slab that are specifically for homes are not actually going to stop a lot of the chemical gas emissions from the ground. And, and there, there's a whole, like that we're going to focus hopefully a lot on that in season three. So you'll, you can learn more with us, but, um, if you don't have radon being blocked from your sub slab or moisture for that matter, water will definitely get, get uh, trapped, but you can always install the radon mitigation system and turn on your fan. You can use depressurizations, pressurizations to make sure that if there is stuff that gets into your home, that it finds its way out through a place that you want. For example, we have two cats in this 200 square feet. We had two cats. Mm -hmm. That means that like, you know, four square feet somewhere in this house of 200 square feet was right. a litter box, which is horrible. It's, it's, it's horrible. horrible. If you've ever seen one or I mean, you, one. you can sometimes walk into a 3000 square foot home and you can smell the litter box right. upstairs. Right. right. Or from outside. And you could never smell the litter box in this house. And I'm not just blowing smoke. We had 7,000 people through this house and several of them walked in and were like, oh, there's a cat in here. I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely allergic. allergic to cats. And I've been standing here for six minutes. <laughs> How is this What's possible? Going on? And it's you know? just that you're, you're we're like, just playing with pressures to make sure air flows from your face to whatever it is that is yucky, as opposed mm -hmm. to vice versa. So, um, so really, what we're trying to do in the show is get people to understand what is possible. Because mm -hmm. every one of our clients, you know, our clients being one group of people, but like America or the world, they have different goals. You right. know, if you got a frat house, their goals for their home performance are completely <laughs> different than a single mom with twin babies. Yes. Right. And so we can do anything. You just have to know what it is you want. And that's what we're trying to give professionals and homeowners is the ability to use language to describe what they want yeah. out of their home. And, you know, a tiny space, one of the things you learn when you live in it is how to be very flexible and very adaptable and like at the ready. And that was a goal that I think we really did want to carry into our home. And so our home is really at the ready. Like we don't have solar panels on our home right now. We may get them one time, day and we can because it's okay. ready, you know? So, so some of that stuff I think has been a really excellent goal um, that's been achieved. Our home is very, very comfortable. Um, nice see. and quiet. Uh, you know, I'm, I know I, I'm actually really 
<laughs> you haven't brought up energy efficiency at all, which we love because <laughs> that's there. That's where we've gone wrong for the last 40 yeah. years uh. with the conversation has been around energy efficiency, which nobody cares right. about. That's so, the dirty little secret. Like, you know, there's all these government programs and energy audits and, you know, energy savings. But again, we have never been in enough economic pain, if if you can say mm-hmm. it in that way, um, to make that matter. Right. And so it has not worked as a storytelling device, as a motivator, for sure. Um, our home is pretty ener- energy efficient. Sure. And this tiny um, lab runs on 15 right. amps yeah. for those of you who are electrical uh, minded. But those are byproducts yeah. of controlling your home's performance. Right, right, right. Yeah. So um, I, I would say just as sort of a, a wrap up then, um, can you just talk about what you do uh, outside of the show? Are you consulting individual homeowners outside of recording the, the episodes? Uh, are you available for consultations and that sort of thing? Of course, we actually consult uh, over Zoom for the, I mean, luckily the pandemic came along and taught everybody how to use Zoom uh, in a hurry. So so we have people actually around the world who call and consult with us for an hour just to be like, look, here's my project. I'm, I'm worried. These are my specific questions. Or can you just look at these plans and tell me if there's anything that I should know might be a problem down the road? And that's just the homeowner side. We also have builders who will literally bring us in on site with their HVAC contractor. And they're like, they're getting these numbers. We don't understand what's happening. And, and we work through it and we find why those numbers are happening or the numbers, you know, like fix it. So we get the numbers that we need to be, um, achieving. So yeah, video consultations. Absolutely. And tomorrow I'm going to go out and test somebody's home in person. Um, which is fun because I, I always wanted, (laughs) that's our main thing. Frankly, the TV show came along. We've been doing this for 14 years now. And the TV show is a way to get normal people to to help themselves, to empower themselves, mm-hmm. to ask for people like us. Because there are people like us all over the all place. Over. And so if you could just know who you're looking for and know it's not the HVAC guy that you saw on a billboard four times on your drive, um, that's probably not the right company to call. Uh, no offense to them. But the, uh, the idea is that we're practitioners first and then storytellers second. Which is totally necessary because nobody, nobody's going to, you know, call people like us if they don't understand what it is that we sure. exactly do. So right. we've always tried to like tell people what it is, and then sell people on why they should have it tested right. for their family's health and comfort, et cetera. Yeah. So, so that, I mean, that's the core, the technical side, and then I am very much the producer of the show. So we're going to start filming season three, which is called Accidents Happen, and it's all about disasters that happen in your home, like natural, sure. man-made, all kinds of things. Um, it's really interesting. We've got FEMA on board. We've got a whole host of scientists that are our advisory board and pointing us in the right directions. And being in the PBS land, we have to raise all the money ourselves. I have to apply for grants. We do have a not-for-profit um, arm, so we can receive those. And then we also have a Patreon community, too, uh, for Home Diagnosis TV, which all helps support it. And so it's all those little pieces and our YouTube channel at Home Performance. And then to we try run and, trainings like, put on it the together. side. And we run trainings on the side. <laughs> and we, like, pull it up. Yeah, and we've got three kids. Right. <laughs> so, yes, that's our life. We, we, it's our, a little bit. We drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it, it's been great learning more about you and I, I will continue to, to watch the, the series and your YouTube channel because I'm learning so much and there's so much more that I, I haven't even gotten into yet from, from your episode. So, um, thanks so much and, uh, best of luck for, uh, 2022 for, for you both. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you. you. Likewise. And thanks to everyone who's listening. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Corbett and Grace Lunsford are the stars of the public television series Home Diagnosis and founders of the Building Performance Workshop. You can check out clips from their show at homediagnosis.tv. That wraps up today's show. If you're new to Residential Tech Talks, please subscribe to the weekly podcast on your preferred platform and consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. Also, check out all the latest residential tech news at the magazine's website, restechtoday.com, where you can also subscribe to the bi-monthly print and digital magazine and to our Tuesday and Friday email newsletters. Until next time, please stay safe, stay inspired, and let us know if you have a great story to tell.